Hello, my friends. Coming back at you with another video. This is a really lightweight old door that my parents pulled out of their garage earlier this year. And I have decided to turn it into a table in a new little workspace that I'm creating here in my studio. And I thought it'd be fun to take you along with me. Um, if it's not clear at this point, I will draw and paint on anything and everything from our dishwasher to murals on walls, the outside of buildings, our deck, side tables, um, you name it. I love to paint on stuff and I don't have a lot of rules for myself in this process, but I'm gonna take you along and throw a few tips in this video if you wanna do something similar. I'm not gonna to get too precious with this project. I just want a really cool desk um, that I can sit at for streaming and editing videos, and I want my desk to be filled with a whole bunch of pattern because it's gonna be going in front of my new mural that I painted. So I'm gonna let you all watch me with this process, maybe inspire you to pull something that's old or or could be transformed or something that could just be redefined with paint and turned into art in your home. So I'm gonna get set up and let you watch me work through creating this table. All right, so for this tabletop surface, I wanted to just keep it low pressure for my brain. I want to create a Suzani inspired pattern or my own interpretation of a Suzani inspired pattern or motif. So I'm going to start by creating a bunch of circles on my surface and then I can play around with adding color and embellishments to those circles. I have this really cool giant compass which helps me draw really big circles, but this is about the the only part I am kind of penciling out or mapping out for myself. The rest of it, I'm just going to work off the top of my head and play around with my intuition and just have fun with a no pressure approach to the whole process. Now, when it comes to painting different surfaces, um, I like to use a variety of different supplies. For this project, I wanted to keep it really budget friendly and basically just use anything I have on hand. So I am using leftover house paint as well well as acrylic paint that I will add more of the finishing details and colors for. So I have a lot of different house paint on hand because I paint lots of different walls and murals and I am just trying to use up the colors and paint that I have. Um, just about any kind of acrylic paint is going to work for this type of surface. I'm obviously going to be keeping this table indoors so I don't have to worry about weather. I'm also using it just for sitting at with my laptop or with a video camera on me. So it's not going to get a lot of wear and tear. Um, I always like to recommend if you are painting surfaces that get wear and tear, you just want to make sure you've got some good heavy duty paint. House paint works really well. You can get different colors mixed up, um, but acrylic paint's going to work well too if something is not going to get that wear and tear. So I'm going to be working my way through a couple of different layers on this surface over a couple of different days. The first day, my only goal was to get a lot of color into my circles and designs. So laying down color so I can then go back into it after things dry with details. So this step for me is actually pretty simple. It's like filling in the blanks or filling in like a coloring page or a coloring book. I am just wanting to get color down get that whole surface filled with areas of color so that I can then transform those areas of color with finer details and little lines and ways to kind of embellish those circles. You'll notice that I did not prime the surface of my door, so I didn't um, give it one big coat of paint. I'm just going into it with my color directly onto that wood. I also did not sand it because the surface of this particular door is really porous. So I I just went straight for it with color. This is going to differ depending on the type of surface you're painting on, the type of door. Perhaps you might want to sand things down. You may want to prime it with just a white coat of paint. I did not do either of those things because again my surface was ready for paint. Um, I really, I always get questions when I paint murals about all kinds of specifics and details um, when it comes to the process. I think when it comes to preparing your surface it's just all going to 
going to depend on what you're using your surface for, if it's a wall, a table, a floor, um, and then the type of surface you're painting on. Again, my door was very porous. I feel really comfortable going into it, just straight into it with color because I'm going to have quite a few layers of painted details over the top of things. So I'm quite comfortable and kind of well-versed in this entire process. For me, again, um, I didn't want to make this super precious. I'm not selling this table. Um, this is just simply a decorative table for my own workspace that I will be using and it won't be getting lots of wear and tear. So this first day is truly just about getting as much color down basic fields of color, basic shapes that are quite simple, but will get transformed during my second session with embellishments and details. All right, day two of painting my surface. Everything was dry, and this is the stage where I go in and start outlining things, adding dots, lines, little embellishments, and details. What you're going to notice about my surface is that it's not perfect. There are shapes that are wonky, there are lines that are not perfect, and I am perfectly okay with that. Um, again, I am just not about creating a surface, at least for this process, that that is overthought out or is precious. I just want kind of this whimsical, colorful surface that is quite impactful with color and the different shapes and motifs. I am not looking for perfect circles, perfect designs at this point. There's other projects I will be saving that type of mentality for. This one's not one of them. Um, but this stage for me is actually a fun stage because I can then go into all those colorful fields of shapes, color, design, Lines and start using smaller brushes to add details. You will notice I like using lines. I like using brush strokes. I also like using little dots. So dipping my brush in and kind of stippling on that surface. I love adding little details and lines inside of all of those shapes. I love adding smaller shapes inside of bigger shapes. This process for me, I just want to have fun. Again, it's not about thinking too much or over planning or getting things perfect. It's just about playing around on that surface, much like you would with maybe a pattern drawing or what some people might consider a doodle. This is just about playing around with creativity, color, and pattern. I'm really looking to create this really colorful table filled with pattern because it's going to go right up against um, a mural that I recently painted in my studio. And this space is going to be what I'm calling like my pattern space where there's just all these mishmashed patterns where um, I end up filming and doing some streaming and just using it as one of my different workspaces within my art studio. So I'm not necessarily looking for perfection. I am looking more for just this wild, whimsical and colorful pattern on my table top. And this process took me a good half a day. So I spent probably about four hours adding embellishments and details. I'm not going to show you the entire process, just giving you some snippets so you can see how I like to use those smaller brushes, how I like to layer and go over the top of those bigger shapes with color and smaller designs, just to see how you can begin layering even um, with pattern like this or these interesting shapes, designs, and motifs.
Okay, so it is the end of the day. Um, my table surface has been painted again. I added some of those details, embellishments, and I've been letting it dry all day. It's the end of the day, which means in my studio, the light is just shining down on me in the space I'm in, but I wanted to at least share with you, um, the next step for me is to cover this in some kind of a sealer. Now, I don't want to, only because I'm not a big fan of super shiny surfaces um, with a lot of stuff I create, but because I'm gonna be sitting at this surface, and even though I'm just gonna be working on my laptop and doing streaming stuff to the camera, um, I wanna be able to wipe things down if I need to, um, so I can't do that unless I've got some sort of sealer over the top of it. There are a lot of different things I will use to seal different surfaces. I really like a polyurethane sealer. I'm actually keeping this project as budget friendly as possible. So using house paint I already had on hand, acrylic paint I already had on hand, and then I have some leftover top coat um, from when I painted some of our countertops at home. And this is by a company called Gianni. They make countertop paint that you can basically alter any type of counter or tabletop. And they make some really cool sealers. Um, this one actually has a little bit of glitter in it, so it'll have this extra shine. I had this left over. I will not be using it anytime soon ever again, and I just wanted to put it to use. So I'm gonna just give this one coat of um, my little top coat sealer. It's gonna make things quite shiny, but moving forward, I'll be able to wipe things down as I sit and use this space. So it's the end of the day for me here in my studio. I am going to just cover this in a really good solid coat of my little sealer top coat and then let it dry for the next couple days and then add the legs to my table. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours and my coat of sealer is completely dry. You can see a little bit of that sheen on here. Again, I wanted that so I could wipe things down just as I'm working at it. This table isn't going to get big time use. It is only for um, editing on my laptop and doing streaming and filming in the space that I have over here. So I didn't need like a really thick couple coats. I just did one coat of my sealer just again so I could just take a, a nice you know duster or damp rag and just wipe things off. But it's all dried up. I thought I'd have to wait a couple days but it's been so warm over here. It actually dried really well within 24 hours. So the last step for me is to add table legs. Um, I took a while finding the kind that I wanted. This table is, or this, well, now table, it, this door is very, very lightweight. So I didn't want something super bulky. It's also not a really big um, surface. It's, it's long, but kind of skinnier. So I went with these metal legs that I am now going to um, drill in to my table. And then the last step will be for me to clean up after this project and get my space set up with my brand new door turntable. And there you have it, a brand new, fun, whimsical, colorful, pattern-filled table for my workspace.